Hello everybody, welcome to the TriStar Gym channel. Today's episode, I am doing a roll narration, hoping to give you guys some extra tips and tricks and things you can try on the mat. Um, I'm gonna cover some details on certain moves, some concepts, and should be a lot of fun. Okay, here my partner did a good job of stopping me from passing. Here I'm in butterfly guard with my knees off the mat. I really like this position, keeping my knees off the mat. I often try to pin the wrist. Here I'm doing a leg drag pass, and from here I'm gonna be stacking my partner. This is something that's really, really good. I like to do stack my partners when they they have a good guard. The reason why I like to stack them is because there's really almost, there's very little my partner can do to me, okay? The one limb that I have that's in danger is this uh, pinning knee here. That right knee of mine is the only real limb he can attack, okay? The other move he has is maybe a triangle, and the triangle is actually quite weak from here. There's almost nothing he can do to me, and there's a lot of things I can do to him, okay? So that's, that's a good, good position to be in. Now, my partner here, if I, if I just keep him here long enough, he's gonna end up kind of picking, um, you know, some kind of poison here. He's gonna have to transition sooner or later. He's in a very uncomfortable position. It's not a good place for him to be. Keep your partner stacked and see what they give you, okay? Now, you see my partner turtled. You could see my left hand. I've already slid into a choke here. I'm going into my guillotine, and there it is. Now, the key to the guillotine, in my opinion, it's all about the angle of the neck, okay? There are a lot of elements to guillotine, but one of the most overlooked elements, the most important, in my opinion, is the 90 degree angle you should be looking for, okay? So you look at his spine right here. Let's say this is his spine roughly. You can see that I've bent his neck about 90 degrees, okay? I wanna bend his neck about 90 degrees. When you have this 90 degree bend in the neck, um, it won't be long before he taps out, okay? Yes, he has his hips in the air. That's allevi alleviating some pressure, uh, but it won't be long. Now, if I keep his neck in this angle for a prolonged period of time, uh, sometimes they tough out 10 seconds, sometimes 30 seconds, sometimes even one minute. But believe me, if you keep their neck bent in that uh, angle for long enough, they will tap, okay? So you see a nice 90-degree bend. And uh, once you, you get that bend, uh, just count the seconds, okay? It's a matter of time. Okay, here my partner's up on his feet. It's his turn to be on top here. Let's see uh, what passes he tries to use. I'm trying to pummel here. My partner does a very good job of stepping in between the guard. Um, here I'm trying an arm drag. We're hand fighting here, trying to connect. I'm getting a, uh, a little ankle pick there, kind of an ankle pick get up. I'm gonna put my partner on the bottom. Here's me pressuring the guard. Here's the pin. I love to pin the wrist. Okay, you can see my left hand is pinning his wrist. This is something I really like to do. Whenever I'm on top, I like to grab those wrists and pin them. Here's me trying to pin his ankle. This just makes it very difficult for the bottom player to get in the offense going. Okay, whenever you grab that, you see my left hand, how it's grabbing the wrist. Now, of course, there's ways to defend that pin, and there are ways, there are things my, the guy on the bottom can do, but you can notice that I'm always constantly grabbing the wrist and pinning it, grabbing the foot, and uh, trapping it, I constantly control the limbs. And this foot, I'm putting a lot of weight on this foot. Like I, I could have been grabbing it at the ankle. I, now you can see I'm grabbing at the foot, kind of like palm to palm, the palm of the foot to the palm of the hand. This is also a very strong control. And just these constant pins just make it so hard for the guy on the bottom to uh, kind of get any kind of connection that he, he would desire. Just a very difficult thing. So here you can see me, I'm doing it again with my left hand here. I'm just grabbing that ankle and I'm just pushing down, okay? I'm just driving it down and make it, makes it very hard for him to uh, invert the guard or establish any kind of guard he wants. Here is a very classic position, okay? Whenever your partner puts in a butterfly hook like this, I like to push the knee down with my hand, okay? So whatever, if he puts his butterfly hook in with the right leg, take your hand and push down on his right knee. This makes it very difficult for them to use that butterfly hook. You could see here that I've already grabbed his neck and now I'm gonna be jumping to guillotine. Okay, whenever I do guillotine on top, let me just rewind here a little bit. <clears throat> rewind here a little bit you can see that i slide my heel into the back of his uh, uh hips here okay why do i slide the heel in the back of his hips well you could see i'm doing the opposite on the other side here i'm pushing i'm framing with my head okay why because i want his neck again in that 90 degree uh angle that we talked about earlier okay now i want to bend his neck this way so how do i bend his neck this way how do i bend his neck this way well i need to push off with my head in this direction Okay, and I need to keep him on his side. I want to keep him on his side. The more I keep him on his side, the stronger. Okay, so right here, what am I doing with my heel? I'm kind of putting like a doorstop. I'm making him, I'm making it very difficult for him to roll 
in this direction. If he rolls in this direction and gets his back on the mat, it's harder for me to get that 90 degree angle on his neck. Okay, so I kind of put in a doorstop here. Here's the doorstop. I'm posting on my head down on the ground. I'm trying to curl his neck towards his hips and get that 90 degree bend. Okay, let's see what my partner does here. He might try to go on his back. And you can see I have that 90 degree bend. He's gonna tap here. It's very, very difficult uh, choke to withstand. There's lots going on with the guillotine. Of course, there are a lot of details to guillotine, but one major detail is getting that 90 degree bend. Here's an ankle pick attempt. My partner resists, I snap him down. Now my partner looks like he's gonna spin from the headlock, uh, excuse me, from the guillotine. That's a very good response from him. He needed to get to his back, but I still have a bite on his neck. And if you guys, you know, you've been watching his channel a long time, this is one of my favorite chokes here, guillotine from side control. Not often used, okay? But this is a maneuver that I, I uh, tell you I, I swear by, okay? I have a chin strap. I have my hand around his chin. I'm If I'm choking with my right hand, I'm gonna use my right leg to support my choking arm, okay? So you notice that my right arm, the choking arm is resting, resting on this table here, uh, which is my right leg, okay? So if you're choking with the right arm, rest your choking arm on your same side leg. Right choking arm, right leg on, underneath. My right leg is supporting my choking arm. Again, let's just rewind here real quick. I have that 90 degree bend. You see how I have his back curled up off the mat? He's trying to bring his mat, his back to the mat here. He's unable to bring his back to the mat because you can notice that my knee here is supporting the elbow, okay? The knee is supporting the elbow. He cannot retract his back to the uh, ground. And you could see also here that I'm, I am, uh, excuse me, I am driving. Let me rewind that back here. Let me rewind. My, uh, my arm is pulling in this direction, supported by my leg. Okay, and my upper body is driving in the other direction. Okay, which kind of leaves his neck in the middle. Okay, so he's get he's getting squashed here in the middle, and he's getting choked out. All right, let's see what it comes up next. I'm playing bottom. My partner's on top here. Let's see him try to pass the guard. You'll notice that I'm constantly fighting the hands here. I slide into Ashigarami. I'm gonna lift him up, create some elevation, bridge sweep. Toriando pass, leg drag. My partner now here, um, he's in a really bad spot here. It's going to be very difficult for him to um, escape this. You'll notice again, I'm always grabbing the wrists. Whenever I'm on top, I'm always grabbing the wrists, pinning them. And when you do that, they're going to they're gonna have to defend that wrist. When they start defending, it gives you chances to move forward like I did. I went chest to chest here. And uh, here I'm in the leg drag position. I'm passing the guard. I'm going to be exposing his back. Here's a mount. Here, I'm gonna be attempting a triangle or armbar here. There's an armbar attempt. And here's a, um, a situation that's very common in jiu-jitsu. You jump into armbar, it's time to split the arms. Okay, let's see what happens here. I have my forearm in, and okay, here it is. Okay, so this is a maneuver I really love. Okay, I do this maneuver all the time. And um, here we are, we're in an armbar position, okay? You have the armbar position all the time, you do it all the time, what uh, do we do? You could see I'm basing with one arm, I have one arm based, and the other arm is threaded through. Now when you thread your, your forearm through, you'll notice that the forearm here, okay, the thickness of the forearm is thicker, it's bigger than the thickness of my toes, okay? So I can always, there's always a spot here, there's always a circle, there's always a gap where I can fit my toes. You're gonna to see me fit in my right leg, but because I'm going toes first, I can always pass my toes very close near my forearm because the forearm is thicker than the instep of the foot, okay? Once you get the instep in, it's very easy to thread the rest of the leg through. Once you thread the rest of the leg through, there's so many ways to finish. Here, I'm gonna be elevating the arm and I'm breaking through his grips and here I have an arm bar, okay? Here, I'm gonna lose the arm bar here because I, I didn't control it properly. This is me making, you know, just kind of fumbling the ball here in the end zone. Uh, but uh, it's a very good way to split the arms, okay? So um, regardless of the fact that I, I, the arm slipped out, it's a very, very strong and effective way to get the submission um, going, okay? Getting to the next level of the submission. Here's me with some more Toriando and leg drags, pinning the wrist again, something that you guys, if you watch this channel, you know I absolutely love to do. Here my partner's exposing his back, uh, trying to relieve the pressure. I'm gonna wrap up a rear naked choke here. Pretty, uh, looks like it's, uh, <clears throat> he fell to the kill side, he fell to the side of the choke. So the first thing you should do on this side is actually you only really have one submission on the side, which is the rear naked choke. If you had fallen on the other side, you usually have the, th the big three, which is rear naked choke, arm bar, or upper body triangle, throwing up a triangle over your partner's neck. Okay, from here, my partner is gonna be on top again. 
We're going to be fighting for grips. We're fighting for grips here, my partner. Okay, here's me going for an ankle pick. Here's a second ankle pick, standing up. Lots of um, lots of things going on there. Let me rewind it just a little bit here. And the ankle pick is great. Whenever you see your partner move back, okay, whenever this partner of mine move back, moves back, I'm gonna push him in that direction, okay? It's very important to have that sensitivity. Whenever they move away from you, look, he moved away from me. I gave him a little push. Let me rewind that back right here. Um, I'm going to push him. Watch here. I'm going to let it go forward here slowly. As he moves back, you can see my right hand pushing him. I'm going to grab his ankle with my left hand. Whenever you grab that ankle, if your partner takes a step, that ankle becomes weightless. Okay, now you can see him kind of like turning away. He wants to kick that foot free. Now, when he kicks that right foot free, he's going to take a step with his other leg. Okay, whenever I grab that ankle, I lost one ankle. I'm going to reach for another. If he takes a step now with his left leg, it's easily going to come up off the floor, okay? So it's not me picking up the, the ankle. It's really him picking up the ankles. I'm just kind of riding along. Now here, he's going to reach for my neck. When he reaches for my neck, the first thing I'm going to do is run the pipe. If somebody grabs your neck, run the pipe. My partner does a good job here of putting his guard on, okay? So one really important thing, whenever you're in a guillotine, never let the, your partner wrap his legs around you, okay? Now, my partner has wrapped his legs around me, but he doesn't have a fully closed guard, okay? Now, another thing you could see here is that I'm forcing my forehead on the mat. You can see I'm putting my forehead on the mat. Why am I putting my forehead on the mat? Well, I don't want him bending my head in that 90 degree angle we talked about earlier, okay? So I'm using my forehead as kind of a doorstop, okay, on the mat. So now I'm gonna start stepping over his knee. I'm not gonna let him close the guard. If he were to close the guard, I could be in some trouble. Here, I'm gonna ask the guys to move here. I'm like, boys, please move over, we're filming. If I wasn't filming, I would have been the one to move over, but I didn't wanna stop the action. And uh, here we're pinning, I love to pin the wrist. That's the end of the round, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please like, share, and comment, and I'll see you all in the next episode.